I'm Leela, let's see what's been making news. Controversy over New Zealand's favourite bird. The game where you get to be Prime Minister. And it's an alien invasion. But first, don't forget to subscribe. What's your favourite bird? Is it a duck, a penguin, maybe a kiwi? Well, for the last 16 years, people around the globe have been voting in New Zealand's Bird of the Year online poll. But this year, there's one little addition that's causing big controversy. Here's Kale. Birds. They're our beaked and feathered friends. From the albatross, to the penguin, to the bat! Bats aren't birds. This can't be right. <laughs> yeah. A New Zealand Conservation Group's Bird of the Year poll has added the native long-tail bat to this year's shortlist. And people online are torn. Yeah, nah, mammals aren't birds. Bats, 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 bats. Once you go leather, you'll never go feather. Not a bird, but it's extremely cute. Bats. Bats. Bora, what's going on? Birds aren't bats. Why are they in the poll? Those bats, they just snuck in there in the night. But including bats in Bird of the Year is helping people get to know our endangered native bats. Forest and Bird has been running Bird of the Year for 16 years now, with winners like the Kareru, the Kiwi, the Kia, and other birds not beginning with K. So Bird of the Year is a chance for New Zealanders and people all over the planet to get to know the unique native species that live in New Zealand. And the more that we know our birds, the more we love them, and then we'll want to protect them and make sure our, our environment is healthy. Laura says these tiny native bats have the body size of a thumb and the wingspan of a hand, and are so rare that scientists don't know how many remain in the wild. Voting opens up next Monday, so you've got lots of time to research your favourite bird or bat and start a campaign for your 2021 bird or bat of the year. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has been given some royal advice to go to the Glasgow Climate Summit. World leaders including Joe Biden, Boris Johnson, the Queen and the Pope will be at the UN Climate Conference, but our PM still hasn't decided if he's going. Now, in an interview with the BBC, Prince Charles says the talks are the last chance for world leaders to take action. If we don't really take the decisions that are vital now, it's going to be almost impossible to catch up. Speaking of Prime Ministers, how would you like to be the one calling the shots and making decisions when it comes to COVID-19? Well, now you can. A teacher from Auckland has created a new game which lets you decide New Zealand's coronavirus response. Here's Liv. What's all this? You're the Prime Minister of New Zealand now. What's with the crown? I just thought it looked pretty. <laughs> There are probably easier ways to find out what it's like leading a country. Like, say, playing a text-based game created by this guy. Kia ora, my name is Peter Wills. I'm a science teacher uh, in Auckland, New Zealand. What do you think of this as a New Zealand crown? I love it. I think it's fantastic. I love the incorporation of seashells. <laughs> Peter's text adventure puts you in charge of New Zealand in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. He created it to show how hard it actually must be running the country. The goal of it is for you to make a decision each week as the Prime Minister of New Zealand to see how that affects the COVID-19 pandemic um, up until Christmas. When you get to Christmas, you're booted out and have to go to a family lunch where everyone tells you how they think you went as PM. Jenny. The game's loosely based off of COVID modelling research, and now more than 20,000 people have taken the reins and tried their hand at being Prime Minister. And while my online Chrissy lunch was not such a success, Peter has some advice for the real deal. But I think the best thing we can all do to be ready uh, for our Christmas lunch um, is to make sure we're vaccinated um, and to encourage other people um, to get vaccinated as well. Now get ready to count down to liftoff, because we're about to kinda head to space. Check out this recreation of an X-Wing Starfighter from the 1977 movie Star Wars. Luke Skywalker famously used it to destroy the dreaded Death Star. And a group of Star Wars fans in Russia used it to destroy their boredom during a dreaded COVID lockdown. 
It took three months to build and the team is pretty chuffed with it. I think the main task here was to make our dreams come true. Speaking of dreams coming true, William Shatner's dream of becoming the oldest man in space has been delayed due to bad weather. But the 90-year-old Star Trek actor is determined to make it happen. He's now set to launch into space tomorrow night aboard a Blue Origin rocket. Finally, it's an alien invasion. No, not really. This is an installation at an art gallery in London. It's a floating ecosystem and it's programmed to operate entirely on its own. But they're also guided by warmth. So where visitors go and how much they move around. So maybe they are real aliens. And liftoff. We'll see you tomorrow.